Well, some boys go to college, but we think they're all wussies, because they get all the knowledge, and we get all the... <laughs> all right, I'll do it. Yes! Hey, and that's my song. This is Dr. Gonzo, the college song. I didn't go to college, but I did uh, play in bands for a really, really long time. And I'm here to talk about, I'm wearing my MCU shirt because that's what Marvel has turned into, mainly all of Disney as well, uh, because of DEI. And this was my reaction the first time I heard that Pedro Pascal was cast as Mr. Fantastic. Now, I love Pedro Pascal as Oberlin Martell. He was great in Game of Thrones. Uh, got smashed in the end, literally. And I liked him as uh, Pena, I believe his name was, in Narcos. But I, I don't have that much respect for Pedro Pascal as, a, as an actor. They point to the Mandalorian. But he was a good voice actor, maybe, in Mandalorian, because they didn't show a lot of close-ups of his face at all, because the Mandalorian wore the helmet, followed the rules more than uh, the Halo series did. Um, but uh, the couple close-ups Pedro did in the, in the uh, Mandalorian, uh, where he was uh, with uh, the child, Baby Yoda, I, I thought those were pretty good. But as Mr. Fantastic, as the picture, uh, the, the opening picture showed, he's Mexican. Uh, no, he's, uh, he's from Chile, Chile, as my friend Polly would say. Hey, and I, I do want to give a plug to a guy who's really up on all stuff uh, for the Hispanic market. Um, he's, I call him the Telemundo of YouTube. Anything you want to know about uh, Mexican, Spanish, Hispanic, Latin culture, uh, go to the Latino slant. My friend Paulie's over there, and he's really epic uh, uh, about doing a really good job on, on Hispanics. So I don't, I don't have a prejudice bone in my body. I don't, I do care about race swapping. I thought when they first put uh, Nick Fury in as uh, Samuel L. Jackson, I didn't like it that they uh, swapped out a white guy for a black guy. Um, not because I'm prejudiced, just because he was written in the comic books as a white guy. And uh, but you know, Samuel L. Jackson worked for a while, and then they then they totally screwed his character up, um, as you could see in, in uh, the Marvels and all that. He said they sissified him. Uh, I guess would be the best way to to put it. But here's somebody that really I I I heard this tape, so I wanted to share this with you, Joe Bob Briggs. I've actually met him before. And I have a lot of stuff of, of his up on my channel. Hopefully, I'll have an interview with him uh, pretty soon. Um, Joe Bob nails it right here. So listen to the wisdom of Joe Bob Briggs. Uh, Joe Bob Briggs was in Monster Vi uh, did uh, Joe Bob's Drive-In, Monster Vision. Uh, I listened to him a little bit before I started with Chris Gore. And uh, they like horror movies, and they're very good at what they do. Uh, quick shout-out to Chris Gore. Of course, who's on the men still, but he's out there doing it. He's out there live uh, now with Film Threat and uh, doing a great job. And here is my stick spin for my friend Glenn. And cheers to Alan and, of course, um, Dante, who did a great job of filling in for Chris. Well, back on the subject, as you know, I like to wander. Here's what Joe Bob thinks about diversity. We already do all the work. In the production meeting, you know, it started in the 90s, I think. They had this whole go black movement. You know, I remember going to an audition for the role of a police captain in a TV movie. And when I got to the waiting room, the receptionist said, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't hear? Oh, somebody should have called you. 
we're going black with this role. Now, that was the first time I had ever heard that phrase. So I said, would you repeat that? And she said, we're, we're hiring an African-American for this part. Only African-Americans can, can, can be interviewed for this part. And what I wanted to say was, uh, wait, is this the same female casting director who is notorious in New York City for bringing actresses to tears by telling them they're too short, too fat, too blonde, too perky, too old, too young, too chubby, too Jewish, too ethnic, too whatever? In other words, pointing out things they have no control over because the script is written that way and the script is sacred. And yes, it was that same woman. Apparently, skin color was the only thing that wasn't sacred in a shooting script. So I'm guessing, but I would imagine there was a production meeting, and at some point in that production meeting, someone said, what we need for this is a strong black character. And seven other people immediately agreed. And so the director said, tell the casting director, we're going black with that police captain. So I understand the whole multi multicultural, multi-ethnic universe of certain stories that are rooted in diverse environments like Star Trek. But uh, lately, there's been this aggressive effort to use actors as agitprop signboards, even in stories about mountain men that are in rural Montana or where, wherever. You know, and the director, producer, you, they can't argue with them. You know, the, the director might say, well, no, the mayor of Thornton, Colorado is not transgender in this script. And they go, why not? Why wouldn't it be a better story? if the mayor was transgender. I mean, these conversations actually take place, and they take place long after the screenwriter has lost control of his work. He's got a three-inch Bible of backstory on that Colorado mayor, and he may have spent nine months perfecting that characterization, but it won't matter because somebody with an axe to grind or a sickle to grind at a production <laughs> meeting started daydreaming about a transgender plot twist. Fortunately, these, ha these things have a way of self-correcting because... People who make movies in order to transform society end up dying of brain aneurysms when the Monday morning box office results come out, and Transformers 8 has outperformed <laughs> their socially relevant stick figures by 9,000%. So watch all those Soviet movies from the uh, 1950s, and you'll know what I mean. Better yet, watch that movie last year, Detroit. Remember that movie? Nope. Because nobody else watched it. So I think we'll know this is over on some future day when they're having a production meeting at the public theater and the director of Shakespeare in the Park says, okay, we're doing Othello this year, but listen to this, we're going to go white with it. That's when they'll finally decide fake symbolism has run its course. How you doing? I think there must be some mistake. Say what? Sir, listen to your friend here. He knows what he's talking about. I don't think you really want to go to South Africa. Why not? Because you're black. You are. He is. Of course I'm black. That's why I want to go to South Africa. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, look. I go. But, 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 you're black. <laughs> <laughs> He's black. <laughs> what in the hell's diversity? <clears throat> well, I, I could be wrong, but I believe uh, diversity is an old, old wooden ship that was used during the Civil War era. Little humor there uh, from uh, Lethal Weapon uh, 2, I think. And, uh, Again, I'm not racist. I've played drums for Chuck Berry, but this old fat grandpa man could never play Chuck Berry in a movie because I'm not a thin black guy. So is it prejudice now to say stay in your lanes? Now, can Pedro Pascal pull off playing Reed Richards, who's a white guy, I don't know. Let's take a look at Wonder Woman uh, 1984. Remember that one? I bet you don't. Well, aren't you resourceful? Come with me. No, I don't think so. Remove this woman, please. Permanently. See, he, uh, Pedro can't ditch the Chilean uh, accent. So we, unless they want to totally race swap him and make Reed Richards a Latin guy, 
which I don't have any hope for the Fantastic Four movie in the first place. Uh, Ten to one, they're going to make Invisible Woman a boss girl, and she'll be running the joint anyway. But um, we had the perfect, I mean, the perfect Reed Richards in John Kravinsky in Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange 2, which I didn't hate that movie, but there were too many, uh, there was a, there was a lot wrong with that. There was a ton wrong with that movie. But John Kravinsky was the perfect Reed Richards, perfect Mr. Fantastic. And the smartest man alive, Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. Hello, Stephen. Stephen, your arrival here confuses and destabilizes reality. The larger the footprint you leave behind, the greater the risk of an incursion. Incursion? An incursion occurs when the boundary between two universes erodes, destroying one or both entirely. Now, John Krasinski was perfect. And I think he is the smartest man alive. Uh, I haven't seen if yet, but we'll see if he still is. But uh, he's no longer part of the MCU. And Marvel is not going to change. Disney is not going to change. I have no hope for them. So Pedro Pascal as Mr. Fantastic as Reed Richards. Well, Pedro is not a good enough actor to pull it off. And everybody says, well, wait, I have insider information uh, that uh, Pedro is going to nail the role. No, he won't. He'll suck at it. Just like he did in Wonder Woman 1984. Again, loved him as Oberlin Martell. I, I liked the close-up shots in The Mandalorian um, when he was looking at, at Baby Yoda. And, and there was some good emotion of that. Liked him a lot in Pena in Narcos. But beside that, Pedro is not that great of an actor. I know the women swoon over him, but I'm a happy hetero. I don't swoon over him. Um, so make up your own minds. I, will I go see Fantastic Four? Of course I will, because I'm going to review it. But um, it's a real shame. I don't think they're going to be able to pull it off. So that's Dr. Gonzo, and I'm saying... With Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards, two thumbs down. See you later, true believers. What? Were you saying something? Look, I don't speak Spanish. Hey, this is Chris Gore. You're listening to Dr. Gonzo Radio. I'm Dr. Gonzo Piqua something.com. I don't know. What am I supposed to say? Yeah, we'll have Zach. I'll uh, have Zach do the next bumper. <laughs> so, hey, Dr. Gonzo's here. Put a, put a dime in him. You got to let the whole song play out. He's like human jukebox. Oh, he's a talker, ain't he? He's an old fat crap on man. Our parents were the greatest generation. Our dads went overseas to fight a war. As soon as they came back, they grabbed our moms and hit the sack, and there they stayed from 1946 to 64, making babies. Lots of babies. The baby boomers. 76 million. And we grew older, oh, but we're not dead yet. Hail to the king, baby. What the hell are you two doing? It's called rocking out. You wouldn't understand, Dad. You're not with it. I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me. It'll happen to you.